does your metabolism slow as you age? That is what I'm going to be talking about over the next three to five minutes. And it stemmed from a question I had yesterday uh, from one of the ladies in our group who she asked what I thought about. Uh, it was in it was in the BBC, an article in there, and they were quoting a new study that's come out. Really cool study, actually, which suggested that our metabolisms don't actually really change and they're very stable until we hit 60. And then we see actually quite a slow decline, not a rapid decline as, as we might think sometimes. We might assume, you know, we hit 30, 40, 50. Um, but what it showed is wh- wherever your metabolism is, it stays relatively m- pretty much the same throughout your life until you hit 60 and there's a slow slow decline then and i actually talked about metabolism weirdly um in our q a this week that was the like the, kind of the main focus of the week and um the, the thing to consider with this is hey lou is it's actually really empowering it's actually a really empowering study because rather than thinking that we're broken which can lead us to giving up you know when i used to work in in the nhs and do diabetes education there was definitely a link, I would say, between just the motivation and hope on someone's face when they were told, well, the, the difference between this, okay, can I reverse my diabetes? No, it's a, it's a um, progressive disease, is what it is. Oh, what's the point of even being here then? Life's too short. Rather than, it's a progressive disease, so it... it can get worse over time however research is showing that you can put it in remission with x y and z given certain circumstances oh cool listen let's let's look at this oh wow they did this and they got this so if i do the same things i'll get the same result if i do something different i might get different results that's essentially what it says which is really cool right really actually inspiring and motivating to know that there is hope and that can have a massive impact psychologically so one thing I would say, hey, Stephanie, is actually take a lot of inspiration from this study because, you know, how many times have we heard or thought or said, you know, I feel like things are slowing down. But the reality is from this study is that what really happens is as we age, and, and I know you're going to go, yeah, but you don't know about ageing. I get it. But I've actually never been older, so perception. But, you know, as we age, we do you have more responsibility, you have less time for you, whether that's work, whether that's kids, whether that's family commitments, whether that's parents' commitments. You know, if you look at the life, you know, it's looking after kids, then it's, you think you have a bit of time for you, then you look after your parents. That's kind of the, the story of a lot of people we work with. There's always someone who wants a piece of you, then you throw in work, you throw in commitments there and etc. So there's always a lot that takes away from perhaps the time you used to have as you were younger. And it kind of comes in with the use it or lose it. Um, Well, I would call it a hypothesis, but it's very real. The use it or lose it theory, I guess you could call it, that's been pretty much proven to be the case in terms of muscle. Use it or lose it. So what's more likely to happen is that as we age, we do less. Our energy expenditure goes down slightly because we do less and then perhaps we eat a bit more. Now, the important thing to consider is obviously things like menopause, hormonal changes. These don't necessarily slow your metabolism down, but what they can do is make us move less and eat more. Indirectly, perhaps due to more tiredness for you not sleeping that well, um, hunger hormones changing. So it's not necessarily our metabolism slowing, but kind of a different question there. Because I I did get asked that question with regards to, what does it mean, surely the menopause would slow down your metabolism? But technically, it it would be kind of minimal there. But the the impact would be more through how you're feeling, your hunger levels and your activity. And that's, if we make this practical, that's probably a case for um, really monitoring your... um, intake over a period of time even if it's short term just to get a baseline to see if certain days you eat wildly more than others that doesn't mean counting calories could be many ways that you do that it could also mean that you look at your step count 
you know what? I, my step count is X, Y, Z on you know, weeks three and four a month or, or these days, you know, whatever it is, we start to track little things and we start to get a better idea. Now, given that, given all that, there are a few things that you can do on a day-to-day basis that can help your metabolic rate, if you like, which if I was to give you three things to do, it would be one, increase your protein intake. Why? Well, protein takes about 20 to 30% of the calories you eat to actually digest and absorb it. It's kind of like getting good interest rates. You won't get interest rates like that anywhere, okay, other than protein. Compare that to fat, it's about 3%. Compare that to carbs, 4 to 5%. So if you think how many calories you actually keep from that, you're always you're already in the winner. I'm running off, off a 100-meter track here. Let's, let's do a walk and talk down the 100 meter track. Yeah, let's go for it. Hey, Sandra. Um, number two would be to do some resistance exercise. Now, h- having muscle does increase your metabolism, but a fairly small amount on its own. But you've got to remember to keep the muscle, to keep the muscle, this is really cool. You obviously have to do certain things like eat protein, which means you burn more calories digesting and absorbing it. Like exercise in a way that provides a stimulus to change your body shape which also burns calories so you're doing now you're doing all these things which promote muscle muscle on its own does burn more calories but now you're also doing these things to keep the muscle or perhaps build it more not to mention the benefits of blood sugar levels and how you handle sugar insulin resistance because i'm bringing it up because we can go down a rabbit hole of just focusing on metabolism okay then you've got Things like, like I said before, like our beliefs around food, our beliefs around, oh, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of old now. I can't do X, Y, and Z now. That's one for another day. But like I said, in terms of the diabetes, education, and our thoughts, beliefs around that. And you know, if you look at the, the four minute mile that was broken by Roger Bannister years ago, no one could run a mile in under four minutes, one person does it, then loads of people start to do it, like thousands of people have done it now. And it's just uh, sometimes weird how no one does it, then two people do it in a year. It's like that belief that, that we can do it, the belief that actually if, if we can make a difference, then we'll do something. So I hope that helps. A little bit of a quick blast before we get ready for some live workouts. Anyway, I will see you later. Take care.